Okay, Mike, so we just had John and Michael do a whole walk around on the outside of the aircraft, showed all the incredible stuff going on out there. But for me as the pilot, this is the exciting, this is the office for me. So I'm really excited for us to kind of walk through this. And I know, obviously we have a G3000 here, but it's not just a G3000 and a Honda jet. There's a lot more stuff going on that people probably don't know about. And that's the stuff I want to highlight today. Obviously today we're not teaching people how to use a G3000, but we want to get into some of the really cool stuff. So if I just did a, a flow to show people what's here and what we got going on, then we can come back and actually dive into the systems as if we're, as if we're starting. Uh, so I would normally start over here from a flow, right? So we get our oxygen system. Yep, so why don't you go ahead and take that lever and push, use your finger and just push it in. So we've started the battery up. That obviously has enabled the ground power to come up and given us the surge protection. So we've got 28 volts running the airplane right now. Okay. Um, the way this, you have numerous options in how you can set up this cockpit. So if for some people you don't want the checklist over there, if you're flying with a two-person crew, you could move the checklist over here if you wanted to. So right now we've got it here on my side. We could move it over to this side. And I noticed that to use it, I'm just scrolling right here on the yoke. And uh, so I got my battery system on. I just press it, check oxygen system we just push it in press in check now we're on to our pressurization so what Honda teaches and flight safety teach is a similar concept to what you and I learned years ago and and um, what most jet jet pilots are using and that's more of a flow rather than a do list we're gonna come back to that as a checklist so the in the Honda jet everything starts right here with your CDU so the first thing we're going to do when we get in, I would say today, let's let's go ahead and do a mock flight. And this is how we'd set up the airplane if we were going to fly. So the first thing we do is go to system tests. It's got three different tests it, it runs. The first is the fire detection system. The second is the stall protection system. And the last is switch illumination. And we'll, I'll walk you through each one if you'd like. Okay. Fire detection, we press it. We should hear, We should have a combination of five tones and red lights. two, three, four, and, and tones. That's done the left engine, now it'll do the right system. Fire detection loop. Once it has completed that self-test, we get a done indication. So if you push the one next to it that says stall protection, that's gonna... That's okay, well, that, that scared me sitting here, so I imagine it's pretty effective when you're in the it's air. It's effective <laughs> as ever, and so that's the stick shaker system. It's the one that, as the aircraft is approaching a stall, it's going to shake and say, hey, pilot, wake up, pay attention. If for some reason you continue to keep the aircraft in that environment, it's going to pull the yoke right out of your hands, and that's the stick puller. Okay. And so it will forcibly lower the nose for you. Um, and then the last one, if you'll push that as the switch illumination, and all we're doing is checking to make sure that the lights are on every switch. Honda took years to develop this system, and they were integral with Garmin in the development of the G3000. Um, I've heard rumors, and I can't substantiate them, that, that Honda was some of the seed money behind Garmin in the development of the G3000. I can't I've never gotten a confirmation on that, but it's interesting that that came up the way it did. Honda knew that their customer was going to be the owner pilot, the individual graduating out of a, of a sophisticated, high-performance, single or twin-engine aircraft. So they tried to make it as intuitive and simple as it can be. And if you look around, you'll see very little pilot hand interface. Yeah, I was going to say that. Other than the CDUs here and the autopilot controls, you don't see any circuit breakers. You don't see any switches that you might normally see to turn on lights and, and different heating elements. Honda's made all those automatic. I don't even see parking brake. Nope. Where is it? Parking brake is right here. Okay. So the parking brake is set. They've made all of this intuitive. So they've gone so far as once the engines are started, and I'll show you that when we get to it, but once the engines are started and you release the parking brake, 
the taxi light comes on all by itself. Right. Once you, if you were to cross a runway during taxi, the landing lights, the recognition lights, the strobes are all going to come on by themselves. Because it knows where you are. On the it airplane. does. Yep. It's geosynchronized. And also and, time of day. Yep. And it knows the time of day. So if you come out in the morning and it knows it's still 30 minutes before daylight, it's going to turn on the anti, I mean the, uh, the navigation right. lights for you. So just very, very intuitive. They've wanted it so all you really have to do as a pilot is look for norm or auto. And so you'll see norm everywhere. Even numbers. When, when flight safety teaches the school, you certainly learn the numbers. But they're less concerned about that being a memory item. And what you're looking for is green versus yellow or red, which is an anomaly. So they want the pilot to focus on flying the airplane. If you have an anomaly, you refer to the checklist, and then you address it from there. Okay. We've just gone through that first page, so if you'll push next. This is now kind of taking us through, and as you can see, that's our weight and balance. It knows this is where we're headed. So if right now it's set up with the aircraft's empty weights previously populated. It knows its MAC and its percentage. So if you go to the aircraft loading section, let's assume we have, you know, you and I and two passengers in it. So, so we're going to in the front. Oh, that's pilot. Yeah, yeah. I hope that pilot's not that heavy. <laughs> uh, we'll just use some round numbers here, and we'll say. So these are your seats. Yep. So if you want to scroll down, most people are sitting in the aft seats, facing so forward. Left aft. Yep. We'll say. My wife's there, and then our dog is next to her. Okay. There we go. And so it knows in the forward baggage compartment we got about 150 pounds and so forth. Now you got to give it some fuel. So touch the fuel screen, touch FOB sync. What that does is it syncs the fuel and, and um, or takes our, our present fuel and, and feeds it in there. So when you do that, it'll give us our, our current CG. So we're well below our, our max takeoff weight. We're within the envelope. And again, if we were out, it would be yellow instead of green. Okay. So very, very intuitive, just from a visual to, to know where you're at. Next page automatically advances, and it says, tell us what runway you're going to depart FXC. So let's use runway 9 today. Let's say we're going to run up to Atlanta or KPDK. So what we can do is we can go to procedure, we can do a departure. So a lot of this is just like the 750. It's and very much so, yep. Yeah. Where it, it kind of prompts you through. So we'll do the Doro, well, let's see, going that way is... Let's go with the... 409. Sure, but that'll only preview it. That won't post it. So that'll allow you to see it because that's more... So let's go back one, go to departure. Let's go to be nice one, that's fine, the one that's in there. Okay. But we'll, So go ahead and hit that and it's gonna ask for a transition. So be nice one, hit it again, and then you're gonna go with the dolly transition. Load it, it now is populating. Let's go ahead and load the arrival, so hit procedure again. I don't know what arrival goes in. We could look at all these charts if we wanted to, um, but let's just see what that does. Let's say we're gonna say go runway, and, free right. and load it. So this has given us, now say we wanna go ahead and load the approach, so procedure again. And we'll load the approach for three right. We'll do, we'll do the R now for three right. Okay. And we didn't preview we're only not okay. right yep. now to over there. Yep. So what I let's say let's say hypothetically now it's going to give us an anomaly because we we loaded one arrival but we're going to load a different approach. But let's just see if it'll take it and it will. So we go next it populates the whole flight plan for us. What I like and what Honda teaches or I keep saying Honda but what flight safety teaches is you do everything before you ever leave the chocks. Yep. So we know the weather. If we don't know the weather up there, we can pull the ATIS up, the digital ATIS, digital right from ATIS. here. And, and so the idea being, 
once you leave the chocks, there's nothing else to do other than take the runway. Everything has already been accomplished. Well, maybe a small tweak in the flight plan. Maybe, right. yep. So go to weather. We won't get this because we're in the hangar, but otherwise the XM weather would populate the current weather. All we'd have to do is load it, but for the heck of it, let's just put touch the wind and put in 360, enter, nine, enter. The temperature is, we can look right here and see it's 32. Enter. That'll enable us to do our takeoff data. So that tells us with these present conditions and our present weight, our pitch trim here, we could set to 2.0. So that's the pitch trim setting for this condition. And then our tapes will have changed as well, right? For right. our well, receipts. So once we accept it, it'll post to our tapes. So these are our V1 rotate, V2, and, and en route climb speeds. It's telling us what our, our second seg segment climb gradient is going to be, how much runway we have available, how much runway we're going to use. So again, very intuitive. We can change that if we're taking, this is assuming we're going to take off with flaps approach. Um, the airplane's not certified for a no flap takeoff, but if you did for some reason, it would give you that information. If the runway was wet or icy, it'll it'll account for that, um, or you can you can tell it that you've got anti-icing equipment on. So we'll go ahead and accept accept takeoff data, which we have. Just now saw the changes here. Yep. So what that's done is it'll post all your speeds on your speed tape. Go ahead and push next. This gives you a variety of options that have to do with how the the airplane behaves in the climb. So if you wanted to have it do a VNAV climb um, and a VNAV descent with optimal speed profiles, you could enter this. What's easiest, and you can still do it, is just to enter a final cruise altitude. So let's say we're going to run up there at FL360. Now it knows what destination altitude we want to go to and it's going to determine what kind of cruise speed, not cruise speed, but climb speed and descent speed and things like that. Now, a lot of that has to do with the FADEX, right? So it'll make those adjustments or is it not? No, no it won't make any adjustments for us. The airplane doesn't yet have auto throttles. The newest okay. version the they new just version. announced does. That's what I was just reading. So but yeah. what it's going to do is give us speed cues and it'll okay. come on, a, a voice will come on and say speed target and it'll tell you what climb speed you should be at for various segments of climb and descent. So we'll go ahead and accept that data by hitting initialization again. So we see we got four check boxes, meaning we've, we've addressed everything we need to address. We'll just accept that initialization. Yep. Now we go to flight plan page. There's our flight plan. We can scroll out and take a look at it. We're in the hangar, so it's yeah. It's tracking up. But well, it's also showing our first point in the departure. Yep. Because it will be vectors exactly. for that. So that, that gives us a kind of a quick and dirty on it. Yeah, you can see it here, just showing the, the man, manual it's, sequencing. It's looking for your vectors, yeah. Yep. So incredibly intuitive system. Now that we've got everything laid out, now is when we go and run the checklist and be sure we haven't forgotten anything. Okay. So we won't go through the whole checklist, but you could so now we're, uh, so I just keep hit, we'll so, just keep hitting enter, yep. ELT, nose wheel steering, norm. Nose wheel steering's here, and everything should be in norm. Landing gear is down. We already did the flow. Yep. Parking brakes, we talked about. So how does this work? Just push your So what you, there you go. You just, you just push your button and let it go and it'll, Wow. it'll, yeah, you, you kind of got it. Well, that's just you don't have I'm, to know whether a, you're parking brakes That's just because right? I'm letting it go. Yep. <laughs> All right, flaps, thrust reverses. Go ahead. Flaps are here. Thrust reverse is retracted. Thrust levers. They're in idle cutoff. Speed brakes. Is retracted. Ice protection. Everything should be off for right now, and it is. Fuel panel. Fuel panel is just checking here. Be sure all of our fuels where it should be. We don't have an imbalance. Trim panel. 
is here, and we have three in the green, and our pitch trim is set for 2.0 for Which the day. Which just told you to set? Yes. Windshield heat. Windshield heat is here. It's in normal. Pneumatic panel. All of our pneumatics are in normal. Now, what would be difference if it was if these switches are changed? It would no longer be normal, then, right? The way that. So you could either show it off, or for example, on on a on a ice protection, you could have that on. It's just going to show on and give us a a notification that the anti ice system is on. If you were taking off from an especially cold day into visible moisture below 5 degrees C, you would probably consider turning that on before you take off. Okay. Otherwise, the system is fully automatic. The airplane will detect when it enters an icing environment. It'll turn all that on for you. The only thing the pilot's asked to do is turn on the engine anti-ice. Okay, and how about the boots? Boots are... Uh, no boots. No everything boots everything oh, okay. is hot wing and, and an electromechanical... Electrum mechanical thermo device on the tail. Okay. So it's all all electric and, and heat rather than boots. So glare shield panels. That's all these. Everything's up here. All of our reversion modes and so forth are, are where they should be. And then we have the glare shield panel. Glare shield panel is everything up here is as it should be. Nothing's in a in an off mode like a pitch trim servo or in a reversionary mode. So everything is in a normal auto mode. Standby instruments. Yep. We're all good here. Get our altimeter set. That's all good. Um, avionics. All our systems checks are complete. We've got our, our flight plan loaded. We've got our flight data loaded as far as our told data. Okay. Now it's telling us to Go so to new checklist. Push that button one more time and that'll bring up the next checklist. So right now, what I will normally do is I will have this checklist run all the way up through engine start before passengers ever get there. So that way, once the passengers are loaded, the cabin's nice and cool, everything is loaded, you've already picked up your clearance, you're ready to go. All you got to do is get in, start the engines and go. Okay. So we don't have to go through the whole checklist. Yep, I mean, it's question. obvious doors and everybody knows that. Yep. All right, great. Now, is there anything else while we're kind of in the middle here uh, that is kind of automatic in this system when it comes to the Honda Jet? You know, we talked about the lights are automatic. I mean, what else just happens that the pilot doesn't have to worry about? Everything is automatic for the most part. So once the, one, once the pilot starts to taxi, as I've mentioned, when he turns off the, the uh, parking brake, it turns on the taxi light. They assume he's gonna taxi, so go ahead and turn that on. And you can see the position of all the lights over here on this scoreboard. This is kind of giving us an indication of where everything is. As we taxi to the end of the runway and get cleared on the runway, lights are gonna come on. When we advance power to takeoff, landings, recognition lights, strobe lights are all gonna come on. When we take off and retract the gear, landing lights are gonna go out. Above 18,000 feet, Streps and strobes and recognition lights are going to go out. Um, so let me ask you while you're right there, sorry. Also see that we have our quick donning masks. We do, which yep. are nice. Do you have to plug on plug or no. any of that? Is it all automatic? Everything is completely automatic. The only thing that's part of the check is to test the flow by pushing the button, confirming you're on 100%, but everything is automatic. Okay. So we don't have trouble with leaking masks in the Honda Jet and that type of thing. They're in a self-contained box. You pull the mask out. It's an over-the-head quick don. Very simple. There we go. All you need to do is take, should have that been an emergency situation, all you would need to do is take over by your left knee and switch the, the mask go right up here by the battery mask yeah no that's a right here okay. yep changes the the uh, audio from your headset to the oxygen mask okay I like that so we're saying you're coming through 18,000 feet climbing through 18,000 feet those lights go off so only the necessary lights beacon strobe could be at night or at night you would still have your navigation lights that are on but again everything's automatic we have the capability to override everything if we want to. 
Aircraft systems, let's go to exterior lighting. So we can go there, everything is in a normal configuration right now. If we wanted to turn the taxi light on right now, we could do that. And we'll get a corresponding Scion indication. Okay. So everything can be overridden or shut off or just left in auto and normal. Okay. So again, there's very little for a pilot to do. It's so intuitive. It spoils you. When you go into another aircraft after being in this system, you forget how much work there is to do prior to, to making a takeoff. Well, it's making you focus on the stuff that's important. Yes. I mean, everybody out there now that's running the 750 or the 750 XIs, the 650s, or even the Garmin 1000s and stuff, I mean, this is pretty exciting when you get to this, this setup. I mean, it's... You know, the old joke, I think you and I have probably laughed at it over the years, is as you get more sophisticated in aircraft, they kind of get easier to fly. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's almost the, the yeah. secret of aviation, but... <laughs> Can you tell that to the insurance companies, by the right. way? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so that that's great. So, we go up through 18,000, we level off, pressurization, everything's automatic. What's the cabin pressure differential? Yep, so what, that's an interesting point. You'll notice right here in this magenta, LFE feet means our landing field elevation. So when we go into Peachtree to cab, it knows that the landing field elevation is 998 feet. Because we already put it in our flight plan. Correct. And it knows where we are. So it knows the elevation. We've told it what altitude we're going to. So the pressurization runs all by itself. There's no pressurization management. There's no fuel management on the Honda jet. So you, all you're doing is monitoring. It's certified to a nine PSI max differential pressure, which holds about a 6,000 foot cabin at, at 43,000 feet, extremely comfortable. Um, and it's, there's just nothing to do other than confirm that the system is functioning normally. So one of the after takeoff checklist items is to confirm you won't see it right now because in this phase, well, uh, up here you'll see it, but these items in different phases of flight will change because right now where the flaps are is very important. Once we're up in the air and cruising, it's not important. So that'll go away. Okay. So um, it's intuitive enough to know you don't need to see that right now. Keep it simple. You know? Yep. So. In cruise, all you're looking for is an additional PSI. So once you climb through 3,000 feet or so, you're starting to see maybe half a PSI coming in. The cabin's pressurizing, just monitor. If for some reason it should not be pressurizing the way it should, you're gonna get both a visual and an oral tone saying, hey, something's not right, you may want to investigate it. Okay, so then we're coming down out of 18,000. Again, you know, it's, this is a hard video to do because there's nothing you need to do. The aircraft does it for you. So it already knows where you're going. You already have your approach set up. And, and you know, what's interesting about what you just talked about when we said, hey, we're doing everything on the ground, we're setting up our approach, our procedures, you know, our arrival. You know, that's always been like an argument. And a lot of people say, oh no, I'm gonna wait till I get up. I got three hours to deal with that and worry about that. This is a perfect example of people that really thought it out to know that you should actually do that on the ground. And, and I actually learned from what they've done here. And I actually do that even in my 750s now. I do all that on the ground and have all that in place too. So I love the fact that they just built this all into the system like that. You know, I think by doing it, it gives us so much more time to brief ourselves on these are the expectations of the flight. This is the arrival. I can pull up the arrival chart and take a look at it if I want to. Um, so right now it knows we're sitting at Executive Airport it's going to let me scroll into the chart. We're geo-referenced, but again, being in the hangar, it's not showing the aircraft. Yeah. I have the capability that I could go in and and pull up the, the chart for PDK. And once we leave the ground, PDK. Once we leave the ground, it'll automatically populate all of our destination information because it knows that's where we're going. Okay. So here's the airport information. It knows that we're on the arrival. It, it'll pull up the arrival. It'll give us any crossing restrictions or speed restrictions that'll be available to us. It's touchscreen, so it's easy to navigate around. 
it knows from our flight plan which approach we've selected, so it's pulling up that approach for us. It's geo-referenced, so we'll see the aircraft in the plan view on the, air, on, on the Jepson approach plate. It's available with either Jepson or NOAA plates, whichever you, okay. whichever you prefer. Uh, do you see yourself on you the do. VNAV2? You, where you don't see it is here. And for whatever reason, I, I think that there's some, um, some reason for that, because I believe there's, there's very few aircraft, if any, that will show you in that view. Okay. It'll show you here, but not on the VNAV side. Okay. But of course, we obviously have the map. And so we, we, and we have another capability. So if we go to here and go to our map page, we can turn on our VNAV if we want to. So I did that on the wrong screen. Let me go back over to this screen and say map. We can pull up flight plan text here if we want to. We can have flight plan progress where it shows where we are on our flight. But this is a popular one where it'll show us on VNAV. This isn't populating because it doesn't have the GPS, but it'll show all the step down fixes, if any, and where the aircraft is in relation to those. So in this aircraft, unlike my 750, I don't have to add in here like I want to be five miles ahead of final approach fix at 2,000 feet, I mean, it's going to calculate it for us, or can we do that also? Nope. So what it knows is it knows from the Jepson chart. So if we look at the arrival in the PDK, it knows all the step-down fixes, and it looks like the only fix, ultimate fix is 4,000. But if you're doing, say, the Captain 1 arrival into Fort Lauderdale that has numerous fixes, all of that's going to self-populate there. Okay. So, How do I know when I should start descending, though? Is there an indication that it tells you? There is. So there, you, you will get on the on the map, you'll get a TOD, top of descent indication. Okay. The okay. Garmin will give you a warning, just like you're used to in the 750, and it'll say, hey, this is your top of descent. You select the VNAV capability. You dial in the lowest altitude that, of, the, of the arrival, and it'll step down every fix, mm -hmm. dead nuts. Great, then uh, coming in for, we did our approach, we're coming in for landing. Yep, so we've been cleared to land. We'll go back to here, we'll go back to our flight plan. We'll go to procedure. So at some point they're gonna give us a heading. It won't populate it because we're not in the air, but we could activate this button called activate vectors to final. Mm -hmm. And that draws an extended center line of the ILS out into infinity. So as we're, as we're being vectored around in heading mode, we always have a good visual of where right. the runway center line is and which way we're going to be turning inbound to the airport. Right. So, incredibly intuitive. Okay, and then uh, obviously just like the Garmin 3000 and 750s, it's, we fly the approach. Um, and obviously, gear comes down, light come on automatically. They do. It knows time of day, it knows all the stuff just like we talked about, just in reverse. Yep, pilot selects the flaps, pilot manages speed, on the newer versions, on the Elite, which this one is, and on the Elite S and the new Elite 2, unlike the, the first version or the second version, uh, it has coupled go around. So if, for example, we were in an original version of a Honda Jet, when you hit the go around mode, we've, we've gone to minimums, we don't see the runway, we go to mo go around mode, it auto sequences to the, to the missed approach procedure on the on the navigation page, but it disconnects the autopilot. On the newer models, the autopilot stays engaged. And so it, it's, again, in the probably the highest workload scenario, yeah, exactly. you know, or maybe a single engine go around, highest possible workload scenario, it's making it so easy for you because it's showing you visually where that missed approach is. It's flying it for you. Um, it just, all you really need to do is have your altitude, your missed approach altitude selected and set. So if you look here and we're set to 2000, it's going to stop at, at that missed approach point. That's great. Okay, so something else in the new aircraft, which I've been hearing about, which I love, is uh, you have like eight cars now and a lot of new features where they can spit up some new... Uh, yeah, they can. So right now, the Garmin G3000 is not certified for, for ACARS. You can, get, you can get flight plans at some airports, and that's kind of the neatest that's thing. That's PDK, in, more of our yep. pre-departure and PDC. Yep, pre PDC clearances and so forth. That's the, that's the neatest thing in the world. 
This aircraft doesn't have it configured. Um, well, it does, but it's, it's obviously not live. So if we're sitting here at Executive Airport and we wanted to get a pre-departure clearance, it would show it. It would show that our clearance is ready and it would load it. And all we have to do is accept that. That's called CPDLC. CPDLC is basically text messaging from ATC to the aircraft. Once that gets approved in the U.S. for the Garmin G3000, the, the aircraft is provisioned and will have it. And that will reduce pilot to, to ATC communications and workload even further. So they can send up like, a, we have a new arrival for you or changes to your routing. It can be, and they can spit that up to you and you can accept it and it'll dump it right into your flight plan. It'll give you a notice and it can be as simple as saying, you've been cleared to a fix down the road that's in your flight plan. So instead of having to say that, it'll come up and you just simply accept it. Um, and then push it to the... Yeah, because it's already in there. It's okay. just a matter of giving it permission to go. Okay. So super, super cool stuff. And and then some of the things that are coming out on the new airplane is even, even neater that it's going to have. But again, everything designed to be intuitive and, and reduce the single pilot's workload. Yep. So it's certainly pretty slim line. I mean, I have very little buttons here to deal with. Um, and even the buttons you do have, you don't have to touch or deal with because everything's automatic. I mean, here on the yoke, we have obviously where we can control the lines in our checklist. We have our trim, autopilot disconnect, push the talk in the back here, ident back on here. Um, another autopilot disconnect? That, that's another autopilot disconnect or checklist. This, the other one, control wheel steering or is another one where if we're, if we're in a heading mode and the autopilot's engaged and we get told, hey, make an immediate left turn for traffic. Rather than go up here, it. you hold the button and, and the autopilot will stay with wherever you've got the airplane positioned. Okay. And then this, I can control the screen, go back. Yep. There you go. So just go back or I go back to where it just was. Yep. So depending on what screen I'm at, if we're not here, but let's go home. This actually is a system control button. And so that controls the sub menu. So if you push that button one more time, that, con that controls our lighting and our environmental. So, for example, we have the thermostat here. Right now, we're in manual mode to keep the, the noise level down. We can reduce it even further by coming up on our temperature and raising it up, and, and now it'll get very, very quiet. We're in manual. We can go to auto mode. If you push that button again... It goes back to where we were. Yep. Or I press it again, it comes back to our mode again. This, so this is how we get to our exterior lighting configuration page, our interior lighting configuration page, so we can light the pilots and co-pilots foot wells. We can turn on the passenger fasten seat belt and no smoking signs. The cockpit overhead light is controllable from here. Again, the idea is no switches. Yeah. Okay. What's nice is when I come here, do whatever, whenever I hit go back, it goes back to whatever. It goes right back where you left it. Yep. Great. What else can we cover while we're in here? The autopilot is something pretty, pretty unique. And again, the, the, the autopilot, the GFC 700 is a, is a, to me, the most amazing autopilot I've ever been around. It's just typical Garmin. It does exactly what it's asked of it every time without exception. So you're, you're clearly working on our heading mode there pushing buttons without thinking so let's go back to here system controls when i push this lever you'll see this is a purple color i'll move that purple color away from there and that gives us control of our center screen I'll go back to getting rid of that vertical situation display and it's gone So we're in a flight type mode. There's our heading. Um, your altitude select. This is a, a really neat feature, and it's our speed control, and it shows up as flight level change. Some people call it filch. So you depart the airport. You want to climb at a given predicted airspeed. You just set that airspeed in here, and as you twist that, it'll only go to 200 knots on the ground, so it's as high as it can go. Um, if we were in the air, it'll allow you to select almost any speed. So that 
enables you to select the climb speed that you know will never stall the aircraft. That's yeah. the best climb for that particular seg or best speed for that. It's segment. funny you talk about that because it's probably one of my favorite features in the Conquest. Because I know I just want to be climbing out 140 knots. I just set that 140 knots and it just maintains that pitch altitude or pitch attitude and maintains that speed. And yeah, I Does, actually love that. It, it's my favorite feature as well. And I think it's a safety feature because some pilots have tra have climbed in vertical speed mode. Well, you get distracted. You know, you're down low and you're climbing at a thousand feet a minute, and then get you to get ten thousand feet and it's starting to nose up and nose <laughs> up and like, wait a minute, it's <laughs> more airspeed. Surprise! So it's a that that's probably one of my favorite features on the the entire autopilot system. Right. Anything else we can talk about? This kind of tells the story. All these are, are your backup servo systems, or not so much backup, but if, for example, you had a pitch trim runaway, not that I've ever heard of it happening in any Garmin airplane, but if you did, you can shut that off. It's convenient. In many cases, or in some checklists, you're, you're buried in the, in the uh, circuit breakers looking to pull a circuit yeah. breaker at a critical time. Honda's decided to put it right here where it's very easy and accessible. Um, so you can get rid of those. If, for example, you should lose an EFIS screen, like the, the cockpit or the primary EFIS screen, you can push your display reversion and everything on this screen will go to the center screen. Okay, great. And vice versa. And um, obviously we've done the power systems and... Triple redundant everything. Yeah. They've, Honda's gotten very unique as well and they've put a microphone oh, button right so, here. Yeah. And it's such a comfortable place because when you're just cruising and flying, this is a, a natural place to rest your arm and it's just yeah. very, very easy. So many days of, I have to hold it here and reach over or, you know, push to talk as you, because you know, ATC is talking to you, you want to be able to reach up at the same time. It's just nice to be able to have it right here too and just make all the... Super convenient. Yeah. Yep. Love that. Okay. The, the cockpit is laid out in such a way where the, the pedals are movable it's probably going to be difficult for uh, us to show but you can move in and out so i'm rather short we have another demonstration pilot we've used that's six two and he can slide the seat back and down and slide the pedals away and be just as comfortable as i can at my height so while you're on that let's talk about the fact that it's almost like uh you have your own profile set up here versus another pilot like how do i get to that or is that in the startup so we can have it where every pilot that comes in can set up his crew profile. So for example, I've got this set. So since I was the last one to fly the airplane, whatever profile was there when you shut it off, that's what's gonna be there when you turn it on. So I have my particular profile I like, which gives me control of all this. It, it, it lays out the screens the way I like them when I go to start the airplane. So if you had a Brian profile set up and you wanted something completely different, all you'd have to do is hit those buttons and it's going to move things around for you. That's nice. And so you can have, I don't know, I've probably seen at least 10 different pilots. So if you're in an operation that is a charter operation or maybe the fractional guys that use it and every pilot wants to get in, he just hits his own profile and it, it loads the, the cockpit just the way you like it. That's great. And of course, we have all the typical satellite radio and satellite weather and um, Garmin Connect and all that stuff, I'm sure. We do indeed, um, yes. Yeah, up, updating databases every 28 days is very simple. All we do is remove this SD card. We've got a Jepson JDM subscription. You load it in your computer. You download all of the various databases that get updated stick the card in and when you power the airplane back up again it loads yeah, I should do it and this is uh the gg out it's autofill right so you only need one card versus the 600 the 600 there the 750 it's just that's, autofill across. that's correct yep okay. it's also got the 510 so if you have your laptop or your ipad your watch or your, anything uh, yep. yep it'll enables you to load flight plans from your from your ipod or your your, your flight you know, flight planning type software. Okay. Super intuitive. Awesome. Well, this is awesome. I think people are going to love to be able to, to see how the Honda Jet works when it comes to how intuitive and simple this system is. Hopefully more and more will get like this, but uh, they've really done a great job, there's no doubt. I'm really excited about the new plane coming out because I know there's a lot of really cool new key features that they've added to the new aircraft.
you know, the one thing we say about the Honda Jet is any, anybody that's ever owned any Honda product always has the same experience, and that is their attention to detail, their fit, their finish, their demand for customer satisfaction is second to none. And so if you owned a Honda Accord when you were in, in high school or college, you're going to be just as comfortable in a Honda Jet because the, the, the service after the sale and the reliability of the aircraft is just exceptional. Awesome. Great. Well, I appreciate your time to show us this. And we're going to uh, go ahead and hand it back out to John and Michael.